Hello and welcome to today's tutorial where I will be walking you through how to paint a dinosaur, specifically a long neck dinosaur, using watercolors. Before we get started, check out the video description below for a full list of everything you'll need to get started. Alright, so first things first, we'll start by drawing out the subject. So for a long neck, of course they're known for their long neck. So this Brontosaurus Brachiosaurus. We're going to keep it fairly ambiguous. So we'll start by drawing a small oval for their head. And then we're going to keep it very, very light here because some of these lines we're going to want to paint over. So then we'll draw a long line moving down for their neck and another long dot line that gets a little bit wider for the other side. And then we're going to draw their back And they have a curved back, just like this. And then we'll have it come around. We'll draw the tail after. And now we'll draw where the legs are. So you'll have the neck come down, swoop down, right to where the little indent goes. That's where we'll start the legs. And I'm drawing mine a little bit darker than I want you to draw yours, just because I want you to be able to see it. But for yours, I want you to keep it nice and light so that it won't show through. And if you find that you have a tendency to draw it a little dark, just erase some of those lines after. And so now that we've drawn that, we can go ahead and finish the tail. So we have one leg, second leg, and then we'll have the legs that follow in behind. So those are just small rectangles as well. All right, so your shape should look similar to that. We can get rid of this line here now. Actually, I'm going to have that face come down and be a little bit longer here. Sometimes as I'm moving along, I decide I want to change the proportions and that's totally okay. If you have a white eraser nearby to help you out, that's always a good idea. So we're going to draw a little circle just to mark out where the eye is going to be. And then we'll draw a mouth. We'll make him smiling with a small nose. So this is a basic outline and then uh, once you have this all sketched out we're ready to get started and if you're not quite ready to add the paint yet feel free to pause this video and catch up with your drawing. So as for colors you can use whatever colors you like. Um, I'm going to make mine a blue dinosaur. I'm going to make them like a teal blue. So if you have a teal blue or a dark blue you can use whatever you have on hand. And we're going to start by filling in with clear water. And I always like to have clean water nearby because that's so important with watercolor. If you can have two water things, water trays, that's ideal because you can have one for your dirty water and one for your clean water. So we want to fill in the whole dinosaur with water, but if you're not that fast at coloring them in, you can start with just the neck and I'll show you how to do that. So I just colored in the neck. And then I'm going to take my teal and I'm going to go over top. Like I said, it's kind of a tealy blue. So if you only have blue, that's totally okay as well. I'm just going to place the teal inside and we're just letting the colors bleed in. And we want it to be fairly dark. So feel free to add quite a bit. But we're going to make our way down the neck. Wherever we've added water, we'll make our way down. And then what we're going to do is we've done that. So now we can go ahead and add the body. Sometimes the trick is with watercolor is you want to keep it wet the whole time you're working with it for the first layer. So that's why I was just doing sections at a time. Sometimes when you're starting out, you're not that fast at getting all the paint down. So this allows you to move in sections. So now that we've done the body, I can keep going. And what I find happens if you're doing section by section like I am is that some parts will dry faster. And if you keep adding paint to the areas that are almost dry, sometimes you'll get little blossoms that happen with the paint and the water being added. And I think those are really neat. I think they look really cool. And that's totally okay if those happen on your dinosaur. So I'll fill in the legs now. And if at any point I'm moving too fast, just pause the video. There's no shame in pausing and catching up. Keeping them all teal. 
We're gonna add some more color as we go, but for now, I'm just making them one color. All right. Quite a bit of feel here. All right. So now, once you've got quite a bit in here, you've filled him in so that you got it paint everywhere, we can go and add some spots. So I'm gonna do mine with a dark blue. So all I'm gonna do is take the tip of my brush. I have a, a what's called a dagger brush, but even if you have a round brush with just a little tip on it, you do the same thing. So you just wanna do little spots. Just like that. And these spots are gonna bleed as they dry and that's okay. What I mean by that is as they're drying, they're gonna slowly spread out. Then we're gonna add a few touches of dark blue on other spots. Just to make things a little bit more interesting. So we'll have some on the foot and we'll have a line on the tail. You can just add some little touches of blue anywhere you like. Maybe a little bit on the head will do some little spots. Just wherever you think this dinosaur would have little spots. And then to make this dinosaur extra fun, we're going to take a little bit of lime green. And we're going to dab that in in some areas. So wherever you see that the page is still wet, and this only works if it's still wet. If it's not wet, that's okay. But if you still have wet spots on your page, you take just color, not a lot of water on your brush, and you just add in some green. And this is just for fun, to make them a little more colorful. I'll add a little here. Nice part is when your dinosaur is still wet, you can have fun playing around with the colors. So now I'm gonna take a bit of a cerulean blue. And this is like a medium blue. I'm gonna add some on the feet. And maybe add a little here. And this one, I'm really wanting it to blend in, so I'm not doing spots per se. So that's looking good. Now we just have to do the feet that are behind. So these feet are gonna be a little bit lighter. We're not gonna put water down first. We're just gonna get the teal right on the brush and add it in. And for this, you have to be careful not to touch the paint that's still wet. You can always wait until your painting's fully dry before doing these feet if you like. But that's what we're wanting to do for that. All right, so we're gonna let this dry 100% and then we're gonna go back and do a bit of a background. All right, so now that the first coat is fully dry, we can go ahead and add some details to the dinosaur. So we're gonna use some black for this and we're gonna use a really fine brush. Um, your brush should have a nice tip on it. If it doesn't, you might need a new one if it's quite um, frayed. So we'll go ahead and add the circle for the eye. I'm gonna leave a little dot on the eye like that. You'll see I left a little dot with no paint. And then I'm going to add the mouth and then the little nose. And then we can add some other details on him too. Like some little toe mark. And you'll notice I still have quite a few pencil lines showing here. We can always erase those at the end, but for now I'm just going to leave them. All right, so I want to add a little bit more detail before I get started on some more of the background. I'm noticing some of these faded out quite a bit, so I'm actually going to take a bit of blue and I'm just going to darken some of them. Just some of them, not all of them. Just to make them a little bit more interesting. And you don't have to do this if you're really happy about with the way your dinosaur looks now then just leave them the way he is. And I'm gonna outline a few areas with the darker blue, just using the tip of my brush, or if you have a thin brush, use that instead. 
Sometimes as you get better with watercolors, you can get good at using bigger brushes to do fine detail work, but sometimes when you're starting out, it's better just to use a fine brush. We'll just make some of these spots a little bigger. And this one as well. So I'm just making my way around, adding more detail. That's all you want to do here. We're not going to outline everything. We're just outlining little parts of it. Cover up some of the pencil lines that I don't want to erase, but like I said, you can erase after. And then I'm going to do a background. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a ground. And this is where I'm going to show you the technique of letting the paint drip off the page. So, or drip, I shouldn't say drip off the page. So we're going to add some clear water. And you'll see I'm just kind of mushing around the bottom. See a little bit of the foot bled in, that's totally okay. But basically I'm just adding a little bit of clear water along the bottom and you'll be able to see better where I've added it once I add this yellow. So I'm gonna take some yellow ochre and I'm just gonna drop that in. And if you have a brown or a different color that you wanna use for the ground, that's totally okay. The color's a bit up to you. But basically I'm just dropping that in wherever I'd like the ground to be. Over here a little bit, and maybe we'll have it come back. And then what I wanna do is lift up my paper and wherever I can see that the water's pooling, I'm actually gonna help it along. So I'm gonna draw some drips lines. And normally I would just kinda of go crazy and let it drip all the way off, but for this guy, I'm gonna keep it a bit more controlled and I'm just gonna show the water where to go. And then what I want to do is take a wide flat brush or any bigger brush that you have and dip it, get it quite wet, dip it in the yellow and then do some splatters and have fun with the splatters. Do it while the ground is still wet. Have a big difference in size. This is nice. So using more water gets you bigger splatters, less water gets you smaller ones. You can use a little brown on there. These can be some stones, some mud. And then I'm gonna do some on the dinosaur too. So I'm gonna take some teal, or whatever color you made your dinosaur, and we're gonna do some splatters going up too. This is just kind of fun. Makes them look a little bit messier. You can have some that, you know, end up on the ground. That's totally okay too. Have fun with it. And if you're not familiar with doing splatters or you haven't done any of my tutorials yet, you can always practice on a sheet of paper. But if you're a pro at them now, have fun. We do a little bit of dark blue. And this is pretty much it. Add as many as you'd like. And then once you've got a good amount, you're pretty much done. You can sign it. And that's it for this guy. So if you enjoyed painting along with me, be sure to subscribe and see other kid videos and more advanced videos on my channel and be sure to hit the thumbs up button if you had fun painting along with me. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.